are these people? So our first story tonight, we're going to talk about Namibia for a bit. Uh, so two weeks ago, um, we did a story regarding Germany uh, and Nicaragua, where Nicaragua is, was essentially, you know, um, putting Germany on blast regarding their role and their complicity in regards to what's happening in Gaza. And Owen Jones, um, who went viral two weeks ago regarding an interview that he did, basically called out Germany in terms of essentially saying that they're feeling guilt in terms of their role in the Holocaust, which is why they're being complicit with Israel now. Um, and But in light of this, that case with Nicaragua versus Germany, there has been some pushback from Namibians uh, in Southwest Africa regarding the role of the genocide that Germans committed in their country at the turn of the last century. And I'm sure most of you do not know about that genocide. We talked mm -hmm. about the Rwanda genocide a little extensively on this channel. Um, as you know, I've went, visited Uganda. I have connections in Uganda. One of my mentors lives there. So we talked a little bit about that. We talked about uh, that genocide a couple of weeks ago as well. But I'm sure many of you do not know about this genocide that happened in my uh, media. So I want us to go back in time two weeks ago when we started talking about that on, that sh on this show. And mm -hmm. then we're going to go into it just to give you guys a little education um, regarding that genocide. So oh. you can go ahead. Yep. Heading that way. Um, action. Good point. So I tweeted today. So Germany can acknowledge the need for Jews to receive reparations for the Holocaust by at least you here? I no, love that. by providing weapons to the Palestinians. But crickets when it comes to atone for the crimes against Namibians. Mm. So I think you remember this. We talked I think we talked about this very briefly at some point of how Germany basically stole land in the Namibia, and there mm. are Germans, well, German ancestors now who live there, uh, sound familiar, um, you know, and took land from the indigenous Black people who live there, and now those Black people basically are like, uh, we want to reclaim what's ours, and you know, the white settlers are basically like, eat shit. Right? Mm -hmm. So, let's play this clip from African Stream to hear more about that. They want the land back? How? <laughs> if ever you wondered what audacity looks like, I need you to kindly go back to the video, listen to the video, and see and hear what audacity looks like, because that is the definition of audacity. She cannot understand why it is that Namibians would want their land back. She can't understand why they would want it back, especially considering how it is that they got this land. Then when you go to the end of the video, the gentleman at the end is a bit confused as to why it is that they will call the killing of 70,000 people a genocide. And that we should just leave them in peace because they've found a way to coexist with the indigenous people of Namibia and not make it exact words it doesn't understand why it is that they want to stir the pot now my question is to Namibians the indigenous people of Namibians and them only would you like us to stir the pot it's a question because you are the only people that can guide us on this the genocide that has happened in Namibia by the Germans has not been spoken about enough and that is why they're so comfortable. The Germans are one of the founders of genocide and that is why they can't see anything wrong with genocide. The killings of the Herero and the Nama people and the ways they were killed is not normal. No, n there's, no there's no form of death committed by another individual that number one is considered normal but how you guys went about it 
So I think the Namibians need to step in, the indigenous Namibians need to step in and ask the world whether or not you would like us to step in. Not whether the oppressor wants to say that he doesn't want us to stir the pot. No, sir. No. Let's wait for the Namibians to say, stir the pot so that the world can know about the genocide that you think should be kept a secret forever. No, no, let's not hide your secrets. You are the inventors of genocide. You have committed most of the genocides in the world. Just because people don't speak about it does not mean that we don't know about it. We know what you've done to the Herero and the Nama people. We are aware of it. So to think that you can just comfortably sit in your 60% of the land that is not your land and then be confused and people ask for their land, their land back. Don't get it twisted, it's their land. Okay. Also I don't talk about where stirring the pot genealogy comes from. Yeah. Uh, well, white people did that. Um, right. I think we probably, I don't think we did a formal segment on this, but I think we should. At sure. some point, yeah, because again, it I think it's just kind of ironic, and I'm going to relay this to us in a second. But I think it's funny how Germany is very quick to be like, "Oh, we will give reparations to people who are just as melanated as us." Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they're complicit in this genocide in Namibia in the at the turn of well. the century. And that woman put it in one of our last segments. It's Holocaust was one of the worst atrocities ever filmed. Theirs wasn't filmed. Right. right. So, yeah. And this one's not even, no one knows about this. Yeah. You know, you can make the argument that you, enough people know about the Rwandan genocide. I think that's our theme for today, just across yeah. the board. Uh, like, uh, but like, no one's heard about this. No. Right, so I think that's more of a reason for us to probably talk about it soon. Soon is here. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure. Soon um, is here. Tonight. Oh, so that's, that's what we sound like. Ew, yuck. That's what we. That's yeah. what I sound. That's what we sound like. Gross. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> How, why do people listen to us? God. Um. Because um, people love us. I, I hear that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so we're going to look in Common Dreams. This is an opinion piece from Ramzi Baroud. We have read him before. Yeah. Uh, so he writes from Namibia to Gaza with love. The Israeli brutality in Gaza, but also the Palestinian Samud, resistance, resilience, and resistance are aspiring the global south to reclaim its centrality in anti colonial liberation struggles. So okay. he can. Oh, so he continues. Actually, let me get the slide over a little bit. There we go. The distance between Gaza and Namibia is measured in the thousands of kilometers, but the historical difference is much closer. This is precisely why Namibia was one of the first countries to take a strong stance against the Israeli genocide in Gaza. Namibia was colonized by the Germans in 1884 while the British colonized Palestine in the 1920s, handing the territory to the Zionist colonizers in 1948. Mm -hmm. Though the ethnic and religious fabric of both Palestine and Namibia are different, the historical experiences are similar. Though intersectionality is a much celebrated notion in Western academia, no academic theory is needed for oppressed colonized nations in the global South to exhibit solidarity with one another. It is easy, however, to assume that the history which unifies many countries in the global south is only that of Western exploitation and victimization. It is also a history of collective struggle and resistance. Namibia has been inhabited since prehistoric times. This long-rooted history has allowed Namibians over the course of thousands of years to establish a sense of belonging to the land and to one another, something that the Germans did not understand or appreciate. When the Germans colonized Namibia, giving the name of German Southwest Africa, what a shitty name! Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they did all what other Western colon colon colonists had done, from Palestine to South Africa to Algeria, to virtually all global South countries. 
they attempted to divide the people, exploited their resources, and butchered those who resisted. Although a country with a small population, now millions resisted their colonizers, resulted in the German decision to simply exterminate the natives, literally killing the majority of the population. Oh. Sure. I guess that's an option for fucking colonizers. Nice. Since the start of the Israeli genocide in Gaza, Namibia answered the call of solidarity with the Palestinians, along with many African and South American countries, including Colombia, Nicaragua, Cuba, South Africa, Brazil, China, and many others. Cuba. The German genocide of the Namba and Hiroto people, 1904 to 1907, is known as the first genocide of the 20th century. The ongoing Israeli genocide in Gaza is the first genocide of the 21st century. The unity between Palestine and Namibia is now cemented through mutual suffering. But it's not Namibia that has launched the legal case against Germany at the ICJ, but rather Nicaragua, a Central American country that is also thousands of miles away from both Palestine and Namibia. The Nicaraguan case accuses Germany of violating the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. It rightly sees Germany as a partner in the ongoing genocide of the Palestinians. This accusation alone should terrify the German people, in fact the whole world, as Germany is affiliated with genocides from its early days as a colonial power. The horrific crime of the Holocaust and other mass killings carried out by the German government against Jews and other minority groups in Europe during World War II is a continuation of our German crimes committed against Africans decades earlier. The typical analysis of why Germany continues to support Israel is explained on the basis of German guilt over the Holocaust, which I mentioned earlier that Owen Jones talked about. Yep. This explanation, however, is partially illogical and partially erroneous. Illogical because if Germany has indeed internalized any guilt from its previous mass killings, it would make no sense for Berlin to add yet more guilt by allowing Palestinians to be butchered en masse. If guilt indeed exists, Hamas. it is not genuine. Yes. Hamas. Um. Oh, I thought you said God. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, something to say. Um, no. And erroneous because it completely overlooks the German genocide in Namibia. In fact, it took the German government until 2021 to acknowledge the horrific butchery in that poor African country, ultimately agreeing to pay merely 1 billion euros in, quote unquote, community aid, that which will be allocated over the course of three decades. Hold on to that because we're going to get yeah. more into that in a okay. few minutes. Sure. The German government's support of the Israeli war on Gaza is not motivated by guilt, but by a power paradigm that governs the relations among colonial countries. Many countries in the global south understand this logic very well, thus the growing solidarity with Palestine. The Israeli brutality in Gaza, but also the Palestinian Samud resistance and re resilience and resistance are inspiring the global south to reclaim its centrality in anti-colonial liberation struggles. The revolution in the global South outlook, culminating in South Africa's case at the ICJ, and also the Nicaraguan lawsuit against Germany, indicates that the change is not the outcome of a collective emotional reaction. Instead, it is part and parcel of the shifting relationship between the global South and the global North. Africa has been undergoing a process of geopolitical restructuring for years. The anti-French rebellions in West Africa demanding true independence from the continent's formal colonial masters, in addition to the intense geopolitical competition involving Russia, China, and others, are all signs of changing times. And with this rapid rearrangement and new political discourse and popular rhetoric are emerging, often expressed in a revolutionary language emanating from Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and others. We see a lot of that shifting now. Yes. You know? Um, Which we've also talked about. I mean, they just um, kicked U.S. military people out to do those things. You know? See which one. Uh, Red Beret guy. That's, that's what I remember. My oh, face yeah. remembers um, that guy. Ibrahim. Faso, yes, Ibrahim um, Tauré, I, I think is his name. Okay. Yes. I'm glad you know. Um, 
My brain don't remember that. It goes, ah, you don't need that. Just red beret guy is enough. <laughs> you know? Um, but the shift is not happening on the rhetorical horrible. front only. Yeah. The rise of BRICS as a powerful new platform for economic integration between Asia and the rest of the global South has opened up the possibility that alternatives to Western financial and political institutions are very much possible. Mm -hmm. In 2023, it was revealed that BRICS countries are now holding 32% of the world's total GDP compared to 30% held by the G7 countries. There is much political value to this as four of the five original founders of BRICS are strong and unapologetically supporters of the Palestinians. While South, there you go. While South Africa has been championing the legal front against Israel, Russia, and China of battling the U.S. at the United Nations Security Council to institute a ceasefire, Beijing's ambassador to The Hague went as far as defending the Palestinian armed struggle as legitimate under international law. Now that global dynamics are working in favor for Palestinians, it's time for the Palestinian struggle to return to the embrace of the global South, where common histories will always serve as a foundation for meaningful solidarity. Mm. Thoughts before we go on? Um, I mean, sounds par for the course. Have you, have you ever heard of the book? Um, I think it's, it's gun steel and uh, one of those diseases, um, like germs, guns, and steel, something like that. I mean, it talks about like specifically, and it and it does this in like a few examples, right, of colonialism in general, right, where it's like the the advent of guns, steel production, and you know, uh, chemical warfare, pretty much, um, you know, are, are are a lot of the the power like sources here. You know, mm -hmm. like a lot of these places wouldn't be colonized if you couldn't bring a Gatling gun, you know? Right. So like that, that kind of stuff, you know, you get into like Shaka Zulu and that whole thing. But I was just wondering if you had read that one. Um, I, I think they done. made it into a documentary at some point. Um, but decent thing to look at, if I remember correctly. I'm sure it's got some inconsistencies, but. I remember reading parts of it. So, but yeah, talks about a lot of this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. So let's continue with this. So I got a clip from TRT News. Uh, we like visuals here. So they will give a little bit more information. Uh, TRT regarding News. This huh? side. Yeah. Regarding testosterone uh, replacement therapy news. I'm, I'm glad that they're. They're doing that kind of stuff, you know? Um, <laughs> nice that they branch so out play, like that. So let's play the whole thing, and then Ooh. I have some thoughts. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, let's go 1.25. Germany announces decision to intervene on Israel's behalf technology. in ICJ case. Namibia slams Germany's support to Israel in genocide case. Why is Namibia furious at Germany's ICJ's intervention supporting Israel? A country that committed genocide more than once, is defending another accused of committing genocide. Ironic? Let's break it down. Berlin had offered to intervene and participate in Israel's defense in a case South Africa recently brought to the International Court of Justice, accusing Tel Aviv of committing genocide in Palestine's Gaza. Namibia, a former German colony, was quick to condemn Berlin on X, saying the move shows Germany had failed to draw lessons from its genocide in the South West African country. Namibia's reaction then piqued the curiosity of online users, with many saying they were unaware of the atrocities Germany had committed on Namibian soil. Actually, can you pause here? Yeah. Actually, um, just as a side, I actually didn't know about the Namibian genocide, honestly, until, honestly, when I started doing this show. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, because I think just with all the research and with all the articles that I think we have read collectively over the past two years, like you see, we see, I see a lot of stuff that we may not necessarily say on here, but we read a lot here. So this issue has, I've known about it in passing, just given 
you know, the research, but obviously not necessarily thinking of where this will fit in terms of, you know, having making this a story. And I think now, obviously, is a perfect time to talk about it. But even here, as they said, like, when Namibia called out Germany for their atrocities and their complicity in what's happening in Gaza, you saw, like, a lot of people were like, wait, what are you talking about? So mm. this is why I think, especially in independent media, we have a responsibility to kind of help people make these connections so that it's a lot easier to kind of make the association of, oh, this is happening here, the same thing that's happening in X country, the same thing is happening in this country. So as a friend of the show, DJ Joe Nice, always says, the, in, the struggle is international. So we want to make sure that people have that kind of context um, in terms of what's happening here or even somewhere else, maybe also be happening somewhere else. And so mm. we need to have that solidarity within you know, the global community, especially in terms of atrocities like these. So where well, looks like we got ourselves a reader. <laughs> yes, I read. In what is often called Germany's <laughs> forgotten genocide, German colonialist commanders committed grave atrocities against the peaceful people of Namibia, particularly the Hereros and Namas, between 1904 Hello. and 1908. It began when German settlers invaded Namibia in 1884 and enslaved the indigenous people, using them as laborers on their own lands as the settlers continued colonizing and occupying more and more Namibian territory. By January 1904, a group of Hereros led by Samuel Maherero decided they had had enough. They organized a rebellion against the German colonizers in which 100 settlers were killed. However, the Hereros stood no chance against the Germans, who possessed advanced weaponry. In 1904, the Hereros were cornered by German commander Major Theodor Lutwin, and the surrender was negotiated. The German government in Berlin grew frustrated with Lutwin's slowness, however, and appointed a new lieutenant general, Lothar van Trotha who abandoned all peace-oriented mm. negotiations and circled the Hereros with his troops, killing an estimated 3,000 to 5,000 of them. The remaining Hereros who were cornered at the edge of the Kalahari Desert were forced to flee to Botswana, which was then under the British protectorate. Most died of starvation or thirst or from drinking water poisoned by the German settlers. Trotter continued his killing spree unabated and ordered his men to pursue the Hereros. In October 1904, he then issued a proclamation stating that he would kill each and every Herero armed or unarmed, women and children, all were slaughtered in cold blood. By November 1904, the order was overturned and the surviving Hereros were forced into concentration camps. In 1905, another resistant group emerged against the German colonialist, the Nama. For two years, they fought the Germans, incurring many casualties. The surviving Namas were sent to the concentration camps alongside the Hereros. They were overworked in severe conditions tortured and some of the women among them were subject to sexual violence and rape by the settler colonists. Within a year, the majority of the population died, with a historical assessment estimating that 100,000 Hereros constituting 80% of their population and 10,000 Namas equivalent to 50% of their population were killed. Jesus Christ. In 2008, Germany returned human remains to Namibia, including 19 human skulls, five skeletons, and numerous skin fragments that are now being housed in museums, hospitals, and churches in Namibia. And in July 2021, the German government finally recognized the atrocities it had committed in Namibia and officially acknowledged the massacres as a genocide. We bezeichnen heute diese Ereignisse jetzt auch offiziell als das, was sie gewesen sind, ein Völkermord. Wir bekennen uns damit auch zu unserer historischen Verantwortung. The German government also agreed to provide Namibia with development funds of 1.1 billion euros over the course of 30 years to aid its infrastructure and for health training. Although it refused to make reparations for its historical actions and neglected to offer individual payments to the genocide survivors' descendants. Namibia says Germany has yet to fully atone for the genocide it committed on Namibian soil and is making it clear that Berlin cannot morally express a commitment to the United States Genocide Convention while it is supporting the equivalent of a Holocaust and genocide in Gaza. I mean... Sounds familiar. It, in what way, Reef? Explain how it sounds familiar <laughs> to you. I mean, poisoning water, encircling people with much better, like, armament capabilities. You know, sounds very familiar to recent events. Um, so, you know. Right. 
Like, I, I think what. I don't know why they had skulls they had to give back, though. That's a bit macabre and weird. You know? I mean, I don't know why well, that stands out as opposed to the genocide to me, but, you know. Well, I think it's the idea of, you know, returning the remains to yeah. the home, which right. makes sense. But, so, a couple of things. One, obviously, could you imagine if we learned about this in school? And mm. especially you know, for Black people, especially for African-Americans, and Africans too, being able to kind of, oh, shit! Yeah. You know, like, being able to make those connections in terms of slave tactics, um, same shit that happened here, same shit that happened in the media. Like, so I think that would be kind of wild for, you know, Black people here, especially to kind of understand that our suffering... And, and this was recent. That's the thing. This was relatively recent uh, within the last hundred years. You know, by this time, you know, we were under Reconstruction slash Jim Crow. So they weren't necessarily killing us, yeah. but they were segregating us at that point in this country. So yeah. that's the first thing I think thought that was very interesting. But the other thing, and I know you, you know what I'm going to say now, is the idea of, you know, reparations and how Germany determined how they were going to atone for their crimes, so to speak, in terms of mm. giving, you know, I think it was equivalent of 2 billion euro a year yeah, uh, for the next 30 years to community aid and health, which it's, yeah, the argument is why not give settlements to families of whom you know you destroyed yeah. which is the same case that for african americans here and black people living in the west are making as well so for those people who especially for like the fbas and those people who are like oh our situation with reparations has nothing to do with anywhere else in the world not so. If you look at Namibia, they're also asking for reparations as well against Germany. So I think that's something, I think that's very significant. And I've said this, you know, in terms of, on Twitter, in terms of, um, you know, it took Germany how long? Like over 100, almost 120 years to yeah. acknowledge, oh yeah, we committed a genocide. And I think that's one thing moving forward that I think we need to be very careful of in terms of what's happening in Gaza. Given our history, like Rwanda, same thing. They did not declare that a genocide until well after close to a million Tutsis were dead. Mm -hmm. You know, like the media, they took a hundred years for it to call a genocide. I very much doubt given our history that people are going to determine what's happening in Gaza a genocide until years from now years from now uh we're saying it now but the powers that be are not going to acknowledge it yeah. but and i also said this on twitter mm -hmm. the idea of reparations for palestinians is going to come up at some point it's not going to happen now but it's definitely going to happen in the future especially given the rise of death that is occurring and we're going to talk more about that in a later segment in terms of the grave, uh, mass graves that have just been discovered uh, in Khan Yunus, that conversation is going to be had. And so, and I didn't say this on Twitter, I was going to put it, but I'm not sure how people were going to feel about it. But I would say here, you cannot talk about reparations for Palestinians without talking about reparations for Black people, whether mm -hmm. it's in Namibia, whether it is in the West. So, there will have to be some sort of solidarity, you know, I think for Black people and Palestinians in more ways than I think we're thinking of right now. Yes, in terms of our history, like, you know, given, you know, the 60s and the civil rights movement, obviously, but I would argue even with this, we have a lot more solidarity with Africans, especially with Namibia, given what has happened to them in terms of their genocide. They're also making the call for reparations as well. So... You know, so, and I know, or I'm going to guess Zionists are not going to hear any of it in terms of, 
having to atone for what they're currently doing, you know, to Palestinians right now. So it's going to be a matter of time where this conversation is going to be brought up. But I think it'll be interesting to see how Black people are going to respond to it, you know, given our needs and our call for reparations, uh, depending where in the world you are. So, yeah, I think, you know, we're just kind of setting ourselves up for more stuff going down in terms of more demands being made. And again, it's not going to happen now, but it's coming. So, but yeah, I think just the idea of, I don't want to make people upset, but the, yeah, but the reality is it's going to take, unless a miracle happens, it's going to take a long time mm. for the acknowledgement from Israel and the West that a genocide is occurring on an uncollected scale is going to happen. And I feel that by that time, there's going to be more lives lost. And I actually don't feel great about that because I think given what we've been seeing, it's very clear what's happening. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're not at the place yet where there's going to be a collective stance on that as of right now. And given our, in what we've seen in history, it's very upsetting um, mm. in terms of that complicity. Well, would you say talking about that kind of stuff now might get us demonetized or censored, possibly? Um... Well, I'm not sure if necessarily... I, I don't know. I mean, but again, it's the idea of these conversations. Well, I'll say this. If we're going to get demonetized or people, and I know there's going to be people in, even in our community who do feel a way about reparations and all of that, I think generally for Black people. And I think we, it's fair to have that discussion. Um, you know, but at the same time, we do have a responsibility to kind of share the truth. And the reality is, given my history, you know, that's my truth. You know, that my ancestors, you know, were slaves in the Caribbean. And, and while, and not to say I'm ashamed of it, but it's the idea of, look, you know, my family was taken from Nigeria and Cameroon to be, you know, free labor for the empire. In my case, the British and the French empire. And yeah. there has been no, there needs to be atonement for that in a way that if you know that you've done wrong, you have to make amends for it. And, and, and all I'm saying is right now, in terms of we're seeing what's happening in Gaza right now, we're seeing the impact that it's having on families right now. And yeah, they're not going to necessarily sit, talk about reparations now, but that conversation is going to be coming. If we're going to be demonetized for having this conversation, well, you know, fine, but the conversation is going to be had at some point. And I think if anything, we might be probably the first in independent media, I think, that have made these connections and have, st and in terms of this is going to be a conversation that will be had soon. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if, I mean, we're d demonetized anyway for speaking truth. Yeah. So I think it's just for us to kind of lean into it since, you know, it, yep. it is the reality of what is going to be is for black people and what will be for Palestinians moving. Well, that's why you can go to code-fee.com slash indie news network and the QR code on your screen. You're going to leave us a super chat or a tip here and there. It's always appreciated. Um, if you can't give monetarily, uh, hit that like button. You know, tap that subscribe button over there. Share this video. Why not? You know, we're trying to get to 2K subs. We're almost there. We're we're working on it. You know, 
Leave a comment even. What are you, uh, what are you doing?